Hello, and welcome to Police Officer UFO Encounters. When thinking about reports dealing with different types of paranormal encounters, quite often the witnesses are viewed with scrutiny and sometimes just seen as being crazy. Granted, there are a few reports that may require a tinfoil hat to follow, but in many cases, sightings come from quite sane individuals. A while back, I made a video about encounters police officers have reported dealing with ghosts. So I thought it would be fun to branch off that topic and look into UFO sightings that come from the men and women in blue. New Mexico Incident Our first encounter occurred on April 24, 1964 outside of Socorro, New Mexico and was reported by an officer by the name of Lonnie Zamora. According to the encounter, around 5.45 p.m. Officer Zamora was trailing a vehicle that he had caught speeding. During the chase, he suddenly heard a loud sound that he described as almost a roar accompanied by a large flame in the sky about half a mile away from his location. At that point, he originally thought a shed containing TNT had exploded and decided to end his pursuit of the speeder and turned off the road to check out the area in case anyone needed his help. After cresting a hill, he noticed a silver object resting in the desert. At first, he thought it was an overturned white car. What made it more peculiar were two people were standing beside the object when he arrived, but vanished once he got closer. To his shock, the object wasn't a car, but an aluminum white oval shaped craft that didn't have any windows or discernible doors and had three legs it used to keep itself upright. Officers of Mora noted the object had red lettering with a strange symbol painted on it as well. As he neared the object, it suddenly made the same roaring sound he had heard before and a blue flame shot out from the bottom of the ship. Still not knowing what he was looking at, he ran to the back of his squad car to take cover since he was afraid the object might explode. Fear took hold of him and he left his car and ran further away from the object, but every once in a while he looked back to see what the craft was doing. The UFO raised straight in the air and flew quickly off in the opposite direction. After a moment he returned to his car and radioed back to the station about what he saw, and two minutes later a colleague named Sergeant M.S. Chavez arrived at the scene. According to the sergeant, he didn't see the craft, but he did note that Lonnie seemed quite shaken and that the earth was still smoldering from what appeared to be a recent fire. Other officers arrived and investigated the area, all noting strange burn marks and even seeing indentations in the ground where Officer Zamora stated the landing legs had been. Later reports of samples taken in the area showed that at the landing site, the sand had been heated so much it turned to glass, and that the once living plants had been completely vacant of moisture. What adds more credibility was that during this event, the police station was inundated with calls about a flame in the sky, as well as others claiming to see the egg-shaped object as well. These reports were made moments before Officer Zamora made his call, so this can only mean they were genuine. A lot of times people come forward with sightings after something is made public in an attempt to gain the same attention, but it is hard to do that if the story hasn't been written about or mentioned. As for the two people that were originally seen standing by the craft, they never turned up, but it is assumed they entered the UFO. Lonnie described them as being the size of a young adult and were wearing what looked like white overalls. Not long after this, the military became interested in the story and interviewed Officer Zamora. The report would find its way into Project Blue Book, where the case was described as being the best documented case on record, and one that remains unsolved since no known craft matches that description. Scotland UFO Switching gears to an officer of another sort, we have the report from Robert Taylor who was a forestry officer for the Livingston Development Corporation. On November 9, 1979, Robert had parked his truck along the M8 motorway in Deckman Law Forest which is near Livingston, West Lothian, Scotland. While hiking through the forest with his dog, Laura, he came across a strange metallic object hovering above the forest floor. Robert described the object as being a flying dome that was a dark metallic color that had a rough sheen to it, almost like sandpaper. The UFO was roughly 20 feet in diameter, and in some places, the shape of it was almost partially transparent. While watching the object, he claimed two smaller ball-like objects came out from under the UFO and started rolling in his direction. He likened the spheres to the mines found in the sea for warfare, as they also were covered in spikes and were about two feet in diameter. As he stood there, the objects maneuvered around him and attached themselves to his pant legs. 
At that point, he heard a hissing noise coming from the two spheres, followed by a pungent odor that caused him to pass out momentarily. When he awoke, Robert found himself being drugged by the two objects toward the UFO, to which he fell unconscious again. When Mr. Taylor awoke, he was laying face down in the grass with no recollection of how he got there and how long he had been out for. He found his dog running around in circles, barking from the excitement. Once he got his bearings straight, he realized his clothes had been torn up, his legs were in great pain, and no matter how much he tried, he couldn't speak. Outside of this, he was feeling completely drained of energy, had a severe headache, his throat hurt, and had a bitter taste in his mouth. After a moment, he was able to get to his feet and stumble back to his truck. At this point, the story differs, as most say the vehicle wouldn't start as the battery was inexplicably dead, while I found other versions that say it did start, but he was so out of it from his ordeal that he wrecked it in a ditch. Either way, Robert walked back home, where his wife, who was shocked by his disheveled appearance, called the police. When they arrived, Mr. Taylor told them what had happened and immediately went out to investigate the area under the thought of it being an assault by unknown persons. Once at the site, the officers found strange ladder-like burn marks in the ground, the imprints from where the two mine spheres hit the soil, as well as their path to where Robert was standing. To this day, the case remains unsolved. However, through Mr. Taylor's life, he didn't seek publicity, and his story never changed through the years, up to his death in 2007. Officer in Space Okay, we're moving into a real odd one that occurred on November 28, 1980 in West Yorkshire, England by Officer Alan Godfrey. While driving along Burnley Road in Tudmorden, Officer Godfrey was on the lookout for some missing farm animals that had been reported. While on patrol, he noticed what he thought was a bus approaching his car, but as it got closer, it came apparent that he was completely mistaken. Alan described the object as a fuzzy oval that just barely hovered over the roadway. He claimed it was so low that it was causing the nearby vegetation to be blown around by the force it was putting off to keep it aloft. Alan pulled out his notebook to sketch a drawing of the object but was suddenly hit by a beam of light and he blacked out. Moments later he found himself driving his car down the road with no recollection of what had happened or how much time had passed. Quickly he turned around to where he thought the incident had happened and found that, even though it was raining, there was a swirled pattern dry spot on the road where the UFO had been. Not only this, but he realized that his police boots had been cracked at the sole, indicating that at one point he had been dragged. Once he returned to the station, he realized he had lost 15 minutes of time, but decided not to mention anything about what he had encountered for fear of ridicule. Later reports from civilians and other officers started pouring in with descriptions of a bluish-white glow descending toward the area that Alan had his experience. This new evidence prompted him to make an official report of what had happened to him earlier in his shift. UFO investigators interviewed Officer Godfrey and then insisted he give hypno-regressive therapy a try. While under the procedure, he told a tale of where his car refused to operate and that he was brought aboard the spacecraft. While there, he recalled talking to a bearded man named Yosef, who communicated via telepathy and later went under experimentation before being returned to his car. All in all, this event was claimed to have actually lasted 25 minutes. Through the years, Alan kept his story the same, as he says he saw a UFO, but he questions if the details from the hypnosis were factual or merely figments of his imagination. Hit and Run This is possibly one of the most famous reports in this video, which was observed by a man named Deputy Sheriff Val Johnson of Marshall County, Minnesota. On August 27, 1979, at 2 o'clock in the morning, Deputy Johnson was driving along State Highway 20 when he suddenly noticed a bright light in the distance from the side window of his 1977 Ford LTD. As he turned to look at what was possibly making the light, he witnessed it suddenly appear in front of his car on the road. Without a moment to react, he heard the sound of breaking glass and lost consciousness for approximately half an hour. A few moments later, he awoke to find his vehicle parked alongside the road. The windshield was broken, one headlight was smashed, as well as one of his roof lights, and the two antennas on the car were bent at strange angles. Val radioed for help, and while he was waiting for them to arrive, he couldn't help but notice that both his watch and the clock in the car were all running 14 minutes slow. When help arrived, it was found that he had suffered multiple bruises on his body, as well as burns to his eyes that were likened to that of Welder's Flash. 
For those not accustomed with that injury, it is where if you look at the spark from someone welding metal, it can cause eye irritation and in some cases more serious burns on the eyes. Experts were brought in to inspect the car for possible explanations behind the damage, and most came back with more questions than answers. The windshield was examined and after multiple tests, the damage was described as being caused by forces pushing both inward and outward on it at the same time. This case puzzled most anyone who looked into it, and Val shied away from the public eye not long after to live a quiet life. On a personal thought, after looking closely at the damage, I'm curious if Val was the victim of someone shooting at his car. Some of the biggest mysteries with the case were the singular damage to areas while not affecting other parts of the car close by. This as well as the claims that it seemed the windshield was hit in four different places. I'm curious if the deputy didn't originally see someone shooting at him from the side, and then the bright flash in front was another shooter with a low-powered shotgun, maybe using rock salt. This is just a personal observation, but I thought I might share it. Those were four cases of reports from officers from all over, and I'm curious as to what you think. There are many more instances that involve actual alien being involvement, but for the sake of timing for this topic, I decided to mainly focus on reports involving sightings of UFOs, but I may revisit this topic in the future. As always, if you haven't yet, please consider subscribing to my channel, since I'm sure you wouldn't want to make Bigfoot sad by not clicking that button. Also, while you're clicking that button, could you also give this video a thumbs up as well? With that, be safe, and I'll see you in the next one. Later!